Hey you, you're finally awake. Gids here. Today we're going to be seeing if the average man of Riverwood, who just wants to drink some mead with the juniper berries in it, can become the savior of Skyrim. The challenge is simple. I'm only allowed to use items and clothing that Rayloth himself uses, and I'm only allowed to level the skills that Rayloth has. Unofficial Skyrim wiki shows that Rayloth has levels in two-handed, light armor, hey, archery, and block. He also scales with the character, 7 HP and 7 stamina per level, but for the sake of not using console commands or mods, we're just going to level 5 times into health for every one that we put into stamina and call it good. Lokir actually manages to escape this time. Almost. We start by using a handy YouTube tutorial I found here, and we make ourselves the true hero of Skyrim and give ourselves the most unique name I could think of. With our beauty complete, we make our escape with Rayloth, who seems totally fine with the fact that we look identical. In the beginning area, Rayloth has light stormcloak armor and two iron war axes, so we grab the one on the ground and do our best impersonation. The game progresses normally, we really don't need to pick up much since we can't use it anyway, and most of it belongs to Imperial Scum anyway. We do grab a longbow and some arrows as well, since Rayloth also has those, but I don't plan on this becoming another uh, Skyrim stealth archer build, so we probably won't use it much. Plus I can't put any levels into stealth, so it wouldn't work out very well anyway. Outside we make our way to Riverwood and meet Gerda and see if we can convince her that we're the real Rayloth. She doesn't buy it. We land a few shots on the giant, talk to Ayla, and decide to never deal with the companions again. We meet with Balgraf, tell him about the dragon, and he sends us off to retrieve the dragon stone to try and figure out what's going on. I totally paid for this horse, and made my way to the dungeon. I now have two iron axes, and things aren't going too badly for me, although I have a feeling our damage is going to be falling off pretty quickly. I also realize that running one-handed weapons isn't going to help us when we can only level two-handed, so I'm going to try and get my hands on an iron warhammer as soon as possible. We talk with Arvel and cut him loose. I play tag with a bunch of drivers since killing them is already getting too difficult. Somehow the trap here was triggered already and wouldn't reset, so they won this game of tag. And I realize it's been a while since I saved. I guess we have to rescue Arvel again. I mean, he was going to run anyway. Fighting through these dragger is slow work, but Rayloth is down for the task. We complete a puzzle and grab our first dragon shout that we will never use. The dragger boss goes down fairly easy for some reason. And we make our way back to Whiterun. I liberated an iron war axe from the local companions and made my way out to kill a dragon. Yes, I realize that Rayloth only uses the iron war hammer, I made a mistake here. But seeing as the war axe is worse than the warhammer, I decided it wasn't a big deal and grabbed a warhammer uh, after I realized this. Off to fight our first dragon. This goes pretty well. You can let the soldiers do a lot of the fighting. We kill him, grab his soul, sell all of his personal belongings, and grab Lydia, our faithful pack mule and cannon fodder. It was at this point I realized that while Rayloth would complete his mission as Dragonborn, his real priority was freeing Skyrim from the damn Imperial scum. So I put the whole dragon thing on the back burner as we made our way to Windhelm to join the Stormcloaks. They don't believe we're strong enough and tell us to go kill an Ice Wraith, which is for some reason the standard of strength they use in the Stormcloak army. It shouldn't be too bad considering we're a Nord and we have built-in frost resistance. We come back, swear allegiance to the Stormcloaks, and make our way out to the first of many battles we will wage against the Imperials. Once there, we meet up with our main man Rayloth, the first, and realize that he's now wearing a full set of armor. Luckily, I still have some off a guy I definitely didn't kill, so I equipped the armor and made my way into battle. We were here to grab a jagged crown, but somehow the Imperials were here too and also wanted this crown. Not sure why. Fighting alongside all the Stormcloaks honestly is pretty fun, and we made short work of this area, grabbing the crown and returning it to Jarl Ulfric. We take Ulfric's love letter and deliver it to Balgruff, who decides he's in love with the Imperials instead, and tells us to take it back to Ulfric. We sit through a bunch of dialogue until Ulfric finally lets us go take over Whiterun. We meet up with our twin, who also doesn't care for these rousing speeches, and make our way inside Whiterun. 
killing any Imperials or City Guards we find. We got Balgriff to surrender to us. Unfortunately, the quest broke here, which is apparently a common issue. And I had to do this fight three times and travel by foot back to Windhelm to finally get the quest to actually complete. We make our way to another fort takeover battle, run into our bestie who gives us the best roast I've heard in a while, and we sneak into the fort to save our fellow soldiers so they can help us in the battle. All these fights are going fairly well, the enemies aren't too strong yet and I can always fall behind my fellow soldiers if I need to heal. We spawn outside of Windhelm and are greeted by a dragon who we quickly take out, as everyone, including our horse, gets in on the fight. We also come across some soldiers holding some of our brothers hostage, so we do what any good Rayloff would do. We head out to Morthal to blackmail a man into giving us information about the Imperials. I get absolutely obliterated by a very strong frostbite spider for some reason, and I decided I needed to get my revenge. In Morthal, I break into this man's room while he sleeps, steal the letter out of his box, and then wake him up and hand it to him. I get spotted by the guard once, so I had to reload and do this part again with the door closed. Close the damn door, Lydia. He tells us of a caravan of Imperials we can raid, so we let him live and continue on our way. We meet up with Twinsy. He has an elaborate plan to do a sneak attack. I tell him I'll just go and do it myself. I go down and start murdering, and they decide to join. The enemies could never stand up to two Rayloffs at once, so we kill them and steal all of their supplies. Every time we talk with Rayloff, he says he heard we died, so I'm not sure who keeps telling him that. We take over another fort from the Imperials, basically going in for a few swings and then hiding behind our teammates when our health gets low. I could buy a bunch of healing potions, but Rayloff only drinks the mead with the juniper berries in it, so I felt like it wouldn't be accurate. We tell Ulfric of our success, he gives us another name again, which means nothing to us, and we head back out again to continue our holy crusade against the Imperial scum. We run by some mages who are killing each other for some reason. Not sure why. We go perform some espionage by delivering false orders to an Imperial commander. He doesn't seem to mind we're in Stormcloak here, in fact he thinks it's quite clever. We make our way to our next skirmish with the Imperials. We use their bodies to level up our two-handed, and hide whenever our health gets low. It doesn't work for us. On the second attempt, I almost die to the same damn frostbite spider, but instead kill him and head over to join my brothers at the fort once more. This time goes better, although I really just used the same tactic again, only I didn't get shot in the eye with an arrow. After clearing out yet another fort, we report back to Ulfric, who gives us yet another name for some reason. I think he just makes these up on the spot. They don't really have any rank to them. I considered using the items Ulfric gives you, since they are a reward for completing the missions that Rayloff is trying to complete, but I decided they were a little too good and wanted to restrict myself to the base items Rayloff uses. We prepare for our attack on the Imperial Stronghold in Havingstard. We start overtaking the fort and instead get overtaken with arrows to our face again. I realized I hadn't saved in a little while again, so I had to do it all over. We ran into a man who said he was on his way to Solitude to join the Empire. Problem solved. This time the fight goes a little better and we end up clearing the Fort of Imperials. Probably granting us the title of Iron Fist or something, it really doesn't matter. And we make our way to Solitude to finally rid Skyrim of the Imperials. We listen to a rousing speech from Ulfric and make our way inside. This goes pretty well, most of these soldiers die in a hit or two. I can always hide behind my brothers if I need to. We make our way inside and make short work of General Tullius and his second in command. He tells us this is exactly what they wanted. When we ask him who they is, it's obviously the Matrix. Ulfric asks us if we want to do the honors, but I leave that to him, so he kills the general hiding under the table, and we have finally completed what Rayloff always dreamed of, a Skyrim that belongs to the Nords. 
Ulfric pretends to let the people decide who will be in charge, even though it's going to be him. We decide not to stay for the speech, and we make our way back home to Riverwood. We check up on Raylof the original to make sure he got what he always wanted. And he did. He's in the tavern drinking mead with the juniper berries in it. His life is complete. Satisfied with the results, we take back up the mantle of Dragonborn and make our way to High Hrothgar to engage in the most boring seven minutes of the game, where we have to prove to the Greybeards that we can learn words. Which, to be fair, was pretty impressive given the era. After yelling at some old men, they are happy and they give us the gotta go fast ability. They tell us to go grab their groceries as our final test, so we make our way over to the... Wait, I thought I got rid of the Imperials. Oh well, a little Warhammer practice later and Skyrim has a few less Imperials in it. We now make our way to the dungeon to pick up the Greybeard's prescription, as well as some touch of grey for men. After all, you can't be Blackbeard, then people would confuse you with a pirate. We chop up a bunch of noob Mazic users who are fighting draggers, killing the dragger for them, and make our way through. We run into skeletons whose bones crunch quite nicely to our Warhammer. We use our supersonic speed to pass a trap, kill some more spiders, and make our way to the groceries we need. Turns out we have been pranked. Someone grabbed them already and left us a note telling us we're too slow. So we go to confront her back at our favorite bar, the Sleeping Giant Inn in Riverwood. Some cultists tell me that I'm not a real boy, but we chop them up too. We find the prankster and she tells us it was all a test. Not sure why everyone's testing us. And takes us to her secret Narnia wannabe wardrobe. She tells us she's a dragon hunter and wants to see if we can truly give them the suck. So we tell her to meet us at a burial site and we'll show her. Rayloff the original is still sour about not being the dragonborn like us. The cooler Rayloff. I accidentally missed meeting up with Delphine, so I had to fight the dragon by myself. At least if no one else got my back, I know Lydia does. Surprisingly, this fight goes pretty well. We grabbed a few healing items from Delphine, and the dragon deals frost, which is a joke to our strong and supple Nordic skin. Delphine tells us the Matrix has to be behind the dragon's arrival, not because she has any evidence, she just has a feeling in her gut. So we hatch an elaborate plan to sneak into their embassy and find out how much they truly know. We turn in our hard-earned Stormcloak gear and weapons, grab some fancy clothes, and get told not to be fingered like three times. Be without being fingered as a spy. Into the party without being fingered at the get into the party without being fingered as a spy. I'll take care of them. Very strange. I don't believe we make our way into the party. The vibe sucks, so we buy a drunk guy some more drinks so he'll life open things up a bit. Is that all? He does, and we sneak into the back to grab our gear and cut through some elves. These guys are pretty tough, and I do have to scum these fights a little to survive, but luckily they aren't too smart, so this works fairly well. We find a prisoner, free him, and ask him what he knows. Turns out the elves don't know anything, but they're looking for Delphine's old friend Esper, so we go to find him first. After finding him, we fill him in on the dragons, and he packs his things and joins us in our quest to rid Skyrim of dragons, since after all, Skyrim belongs to the Nords. We find an old wall with pictures on it, which tells us of the secret words we can use to be really mean and make the dragons feel bad. We go to the Greybeards and ask them about it. They make us sit through a bunch of reading lessons, and then circle around us and yell a bunch. They tell us only their leader knows about this special shout, so we head upstairs to meet him. It turns out he's a dragon, so that's something. He doesn't know the words either, since humans made it. But he knows where we can find an Elder Scroll, and we can figure out the words. We convince this lady that we know magic by yelling at her, so she lets us into Hogwarts. We go to the library and tell this guy we want to rent everything on scrolls. Turns out a crazy old guy knows all about them, so we go and visit him and he gives us a tesseract and tells us to go to everyone's favorite area. A Dwemer cave that connects to Blackreach. We do minimal damage in here, so it takes a while, but eventually we make our way through with Lydia's help and our trusty Warhammer. We kill a bunch of old blind guys because they're looking at us funny, definitely get shot in the head a time or two, and make our way to Blackreach. I must be a normie, I know all the memes joking about this area, 
but the first time young kids came down here I was blown away by this area. The sheer mass of this game at the time was uh, mind-blowing. Anyway, we make our way to an old Dwemer puzzle that I have never figured out. I just turn everything until it stops turning and somehow it always turns out for me. We grab the Elder Scroll and go back to the top of the mountain, where we go back in time and watch a thrilling story of the original soldiers that used their mean words to make the dragons sad. When we get back with the words, Big Bad Meanie is there and wants to eat us. So we yell at him and he gets sad. Raylof is definitely out of his depth in this fight, so we end up having to hide as much as we can and try to snipe him with some arrows whenever possible. Eventually this works and Alduin runs away to lick his wounds. Apparently he's immortal unless we kill him in Nord Heaven. Also apparently he's killing people in Nord Heaven, which is quite strange. So we go to Whiterun, yell at this dragon, and tell him he's a pansy. He comes in to fight us, and we totally prank him. We convince him to take us to Nord Heaven to fight Alduin, and he agrees. So we hop on his back and make our way out. We're in the endgame now, so everything kills us fast enough that I just try and run through these areas instead of engaging with the enemies. This would work better if I remembered how these puzzles work. Turns out it's bugged, so when I reloaded it, the doors opened first try. Thank you, Todd. I spent a few attempts trying to grab this dragon priest's wand before he could open up the portal to Nord Heaven, but he kept grabbing it and one-shotting it. I thought I was going to have to come back here later when I could actually kill him, but it turns out he is grabbing his wand to close the portal, not to open it up. So if you just run into the portal, you go right in without having to fight. Genius. We get to Nord Heaven and fight Conan, who says that he also must test us to see if we are strong enough. We aren't. Fortunately, I dodge his attacks well enough that we can make it through this fight. And he says that our strength truly befits a god, or something like that. We recruit the idiots that made the magic shout that still couldn't kill Alduin, and we go out to fight him. We spend some time yelling at clouds until Alduin gets mad. And then we use our newfound shout once again to get him on the ground where we can fight him. With the help you get in this fight, it's not too bad, and he goes down first try. Proving that anyone, even a lowly Stormcloak from the town of Riverwood, can become the hero of Skyrim. A land that will always belong to the north. Thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, consider liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me, and I'll see you in the next video.